Welcome to Perceptron's webinar on maximizing productivity with automated path generation software, which we'll be referring to as APG for the rest of the webinar. I'm Don Manfredi. I've been in the metrology industry for over 25 years. With me today is Mike Burgoy, who has been a Perceptron employee for over 25 years and is currently the product line manager for this product. Before we dive in, I want to talk about Perceptron briefly. <clears throat> Perceptron has 38 years of experience and has 12 global lo locations and over 2,700 active installs. One thing that has kept Perceptron as a world leader in this space is their ability to create breakthrough innovation combined with pockets of continuous improvement. Today, we're going to talk about APG, which is really a continuous improvement on the concept of offline programming and so much more as it allows you to set up the entire installation virtually prior to ever doing anything on the plant floor. In the past, industrial metrology has required very highly trained people to go out into the field and do the actual installations. These people have to understand how to program robots. They have to understand tooling. They have to understand how to aim sensors and create metrology and program algorithms. And Perceptron still has project execution resources worldwide and people all over that will come in and do commissioning of systems. <clears throat> However, what a lot of times people didn't see was what was happening in the background. Before a installation engineer came out to your facility, there was quite a bit of work being done virtually to set up and do things like virtual aim, setting up offline programming, et cetera. But there was a disconnect because you still had to go out and physically aim the sensors and do static and dynamic repeatability tests to make sure that the system was ready to measure. What Perceptron's done today is created an offline package that can actually do almost the entire installation prior to ever setting foot into a plant. More importantly, once a system is already there, the same software can be used to do model ads or tweaks to the program without having to call a Perceptron employee to come out and do this work for you. This is important, especially in the launch phase, because the sooner you're able to get to actionable data, the better you are. When you're in a launch phase, the faster I can give accurate data, the better I'm suited to find some of those special cause variation issues that come up invariably during launch. Additionally, if I'm adding a new model to an existing build, the faster I can get that data to be to a place where I consider it ready to measure, the better. APG is one of the vehicles to get your system commissioned as quickly as possible with the least amount of time on the actual plant floor. Harnessing the power of Industry 4.0, Perceptron has essentially turned APG into the ability to create an entire digital twin of the entire measurement cell. So instead of just setting up and doing things like path programming and collision avoidance, APG sets up an entire measurement solution, algorithms and all, scan pass and all, scan acquisition and all, prior to setting this up and pushing it to the plant floor. The AccuSite system, which Perceptron calls the Zero Compromise Absolute Accuracy Solution, is one of the systems that takes advantage of the APG software. However, APG is backwards compatible to other technologies in the Perceptron suite. AccuSite today combines the flexibility and speed of 100% measurement with the accuracy of a coordinate measurement machine to give you a truly absolute accurate metrology system. The system today that we will be demoing will be using AccuSight. It will also be using the Helix Evo sensor. So very quickly, some of the AccuSight system high level components, you've got the optical tracker, you've got the Helix Evo sensor, all of the metrology, SPC, GD&T reporting software, and an industrial PC controller everything in a seamless plant floor hardened package with a single user interface. If you have questions about 
AccuSight. We did a webinar on this a couple of months ago that has been archived. You can ask one of your Perceptron representatives to send you a link. The other thing that is a continuous improvement in the Perceptron arsenal is the Helix Evo sensor. The Helix Evo is a plant floor hardened three dimensional sensor that allows you to do both discrete measurement points like pulling out whole slots, edges and corners with the power of actually being able to do line scanning without changing the sensor. It is the same sensor. It is completely programmable from a laser line and scan volume. And it's all set up in an industrial power over ethernet uh, housing. This sensor can be fully tuned and fully trained offline using APG. Before I turn it over to Mike, I do want to highlight that APG is much more than OLP. This is a true offline setup tool and it allows users to create a virtual configuration of the entire cell. It is not just doing robot path and collision avoidance. It's doing things like line of sight validation, setting up the site to the feature, adhering to aiming guidelines, adhering to algorithm rules, and being able to set up and test as much of the measurement itself in a virtual environment without having to be on the plant floor. This includes things like setting up scan line density and acquisition times. At this point, I'm going to turn this over to Mike. He's going to demo the APG software and then take questions at the end. If you do have questions, please continue to send them via the chat function. And at the end of this, we will get to as many as possible. If we are unable to get to all of them due to time constraints, we will make sure that a Perceptron representative contacts you. And now I'm going to hand it over to Mike. Thank you, Don. I have quite a bit I would like to work through during the webinar in a relatively short amount of time, so I'm going to move rather quickly. However, a recording of the webinar will be available uh, upon completion. What we see on the screen is our Perceptron Nexus Automated Path Generation Software, APG for short. And specifically what we are seeing in the 3D scene is the digital twin representation of our measurement cell. And this software is designed around the novice user's experience uh, such that it is not required for the user to be both an expert in metrology and robot programming. So with that in mind, a short overview of the interface. It's a top-down, left-to-right workflow. So on our left side here, we have our top-down primary navigation of the different levels we will work at, which is the cell, our parts in CAD, and our features that we're going to measure, and then the robot routine that will uh, perform the inspection. And then left to right along the top are the specific actions and functions we will use at each level. Specifically at the cell level, a few key components of the measurement station, the Perceptron Helix sensor connected to the end of the robot with a measurement volume represented as shown. Surrounding the Helix sensor is the AccuSight constellation, which is tracked by the AccuSight tracker off to the right, which has a measurement volume also as shown. So as long as the uh, AccuSight constellation and therefore the sensor are within the volume of the AccuSight tracker, we will perform accurate measurement. The only other notable aspect for purposes of the webinar at the cell level is the calibrate function. So when we deploy a measurement cell to the customer's floor, our technicians will go through a short uh, calibration process, calibrating the sensor with the AccuSight constellation and the robot in the rotary table with the AccuSight system. The purposes of this process is twofold. One, to ensure accurate performance of the system. And secondly, at that same time, embedded with that calibration process, we automatically update the digital twin of our CAD environment to match the as-built condition 
of the real measurement cell such that when we perform our offline programming, it will be as accurate as possible. So with that said, we will move on to add a part to our measurement station. I think I will remove the fence visibility to give us a little better, a little better view. So first stage is we need to import our part holding fixture. And secondly, so we, we see our holding fixture on the table. We will import the CAD model for the part. So this CAD model is a CATIA part. As far as uh, CAD uh, format support, uh, the APG software supports the native formats, NX CATIA SOLIDWORKS type formats, as well as the popular interchange formats of JT, STEP, IGIS, et cetera. Um, all of those formats are supported. So the particular part we're going to look at for the webinar is an automotive uh, front suspension cradle part. And what we're going to see when that part gets imported is the design coordinate system in the part space will be overlaid on the origin of our measurement cell, which happens to be the center of the rotary table. So clearly we uh, cannot perform inspection of the part in that location. Uh, we, we will put it on to the holding fixture, which is simply uh, a couple of V-block locators and a pin that will um, locate the part via this hole in the, in the front. So a simple holding fixture uh, to hold our part. So let's manipulate the part slightly to get it in a proper position. And we have some simple uh, graphical tools that help us do that. And then also some numeric and fine tuning tools uh, as well. So we'll spend just a few moments to get our part located so we can start to fine tune it as we get closer. Uh, obviously it's uh, 180 degree rotation between the, the coordinate systems and then just a little bit of uh, fine, fine tuning. And at this stage, it's not overly critical um, to have the part precisely positioned as we will have a procedure when we deploy the offline program to the real cell that will accommodate uh, any differences between the simulated part position and the actual um, part position of the real part in the measurement cell. So at this stage, we have uh, imported our fixture and our part CAD, and we've placed the part onto the fixture. So at this stage, we move to the feature level where we're going to define the features on the part that we desire to be inspected. So we will add our features, and there's multiple ways that can be done. They can be imported from a list. A numerical method uh, allows for just typing in or copy paste numbers, so the, the difficult way. And then also picking features from the CAD model. So we'll demonstrate uh, importing some features. Built into the software is an Excel template that uh, allows the data to be, to be entered. So simply the name of the feature, what type of feature uh, it is, its nominal location, orientation, and size information for features such as hole slots, uh, studs, and whatnot. So the features can be defined here, and for particular customers that have their own format or file format uh, definition, we write it uh, import parser to import the customer's format directly. So we will read in our feature file. So now we see our features come in in our tree to the left, and in a moment I'll show you how they're also represented in the 3D scene. Let's say we also uh, have a few features we want to add, let's say on this front uh, rail component that weren't defined in our import list. We can simply pick those 
from the CAD model, and you see here the different feature types uh, we support for CAD picking, threaded studs uh, as well. <clears throat> so we will add, we'll just do a few here to show as an example, a uh, hole feature. Well, let's say we want to measure the top plane of this rail, and then we'll also take the this uh, square slot. So off to the right, we have a summary of which features we picked from the CAD model. And if we choose to accept those, now our feature tree gets populated with our newly picked uh, features. So here we have defined the features that we desire to create a, a robot routine to measure. From a visualization standpoint, through visualization and or navigation, I should say, uh, we have a few things. We can have some callouts that show us the features as well as the associated nominal data, some graphical information for feature orientation, uh, etc. From a navigation standpoint, uh, if you're a user that likes to work in the 3D scene graphically, um, features can e easily be zoomed in on, uh, selected in the 3D scene, they become highlighted in the tree, so this is one navigation method. Alternatively, if you're a user that uh, prefers to work by names of the features, you can select a feature in the tree and have the software bring you to that feature in the 3D scene. So just some, some quick uh, fly to type functionality. Okay. So we have our features defined. <clears throat> and the next step is to generate a robot path that will allow us to measure those features. So we can choose to uh, assign specific features to this routine or for the purposes of today we'll will assign all features. So we're going to measure all of these in our routine, which we will generate at the routine level. So as we move to the routine level, there's a little bit of analysis that happened, I will explain. Uh, but simply here, all we need to do is click the magic generate path button. And this launches the path generation functionality. So as it's working, I will provide some narration of what's happening. The first thing that happened when we moved from feature level to routine level is there was analysis of all of the features and their types and their proximities to one another. So you see there's a few groups that were created. And what those are, are where we're going to measure uh, two, it could be more, but at least two features with one position of the robot. So that analysis was done automatically by the software. Uh, at the time. And what's happening now is the software is building collision buffers and zones around the robot, the sensor and constellation on the end of the robot, the part itself, the part holding fixture, and any other CAD objects that might be represented in the cell that are required for collision avoidance. So that's happening at the moment. And the next stage is going to be where we actually start planning the positioning of the sensor for each inspection. So in this case, we have 22 features and we'll have 19 um, poses of the robot due to the grouping functionality. So we're going to see that process start to count down uh, shortly here. And then what happens at for each pose is the sensor gets placed at the nominal position as defined for that particular type of feature or features. And then several validations happen at that time, being that the sensor has line of sight to the feature, the AccuSight tracker has line of sight to the constellation, that there are no collision conditions uh, between any of the components, and then lastly that the robot can actually uh, hold the sensor in that position. So those validations are all happening automatically as we're watching at the moment. And uh, if any of those rules are violated, then there's an iteration that happens until the, the rules are, are met. Uh, the stage happening 
right now is once all those positions are defined, it's um, optimizing the path of the robot to connect all the positions together and to flow through those positions. And then uh, lastly, the via points or intermediate points are those that are required to um, prevent any collision conditions when moving between the measurement poses. So those are automatically added as well. So those are the stages of what's happening during the path planning process. <clears throat> so we'll be finishing up in just a second here. Okay, so in two minutes and four seconds, we were able to generate a full measurement routine for these 22 features. So two minutes and four seconds, not too bad, <clears throat> versus having to do it uh, in some kind of a manual fashion. And what we end up with, and I am just going to give us a good orientation here so we can review what we have. <clears throat> so on the bottom we have our, our movie timeline. I will just play. And what we're seeing as the robot goes to each measurement position, uh, obviously we're seeing the movement of the robot, which is typical you would see with uh, any, you know, any offline programming type package. Additionally, however, we're not only simulating the robot path, we're actually uh, simulating the entire measurement process and cycle. So you see at each position the green bands that represent the optics and laser path of the sensor. We also see the green illumination of the AccuSight emitters on the Constellation. And then a little harder to see, and we'll zoom in on it and take a closer look, but you also see uh, some red illumination on the CAD surface as the robot is moving to each position. And that's actually simulating our helix sensor scanning of the feature on the CAD model. So like I said, we're, we're actually exercising the entire measurement process, including the, the scanning acquisition and running of the algorithms um, on the feature on the CAD model. And that can be observed in the measurement results that are presented. This is our uh, measurement results view. <clears throat> so as you see, very near to zero for all of the measurements, and these were actually algorithms extracted based on the scanning from the CAD model. And this is as expected, uh, being that we're actually measuring the CAD model, which is uh, essentially nominal. Um, what I noted earlier um, with the graphical tools when looking at the features, one reason we, we want to simulate the entire measurement process is there are times where, especially if features were imported from a list, potentially there's a mismatch uh, between nominal definitions in the list and the revision of the CAD that may be in use, and that can all be detected at this time, uh, both numerically and visually. Um, and any issues in that regard can be resolved um, up front before deploying to the, to the measurement cell. Um, on our timeline, just a quick note of how the movie timeline works. Just this, the typical movie play, um, we can step. The bars, the vertical bars represent each measurement pose of the robot with the color indicating the type of feature and when there's a stacked bar, means there's multiple features being measured in that pose with the gray bars representing uh, intermediate uh, or via poses for collision purposes. So if we zoom in and take a closer look at a couple of things, we will see this is one of our grouped positions. So the software automatically determined that while measuring this slot feature, we can also acquire this whole feature uh, in the same position of the robot. However, you also see that what we call scan passes, there's two different two different uh, scan passes, one designed specifically for each each feature. So we see the slot 
uh, has a slightly wider spacing between the scan lines than what this smaller hole does. And the software automatically determined based on the, f the type of feature and the size of the feature of what is the optimum uh, scanning density to generate a repeatable, accurate measurement for that feature. So our goal is to ensure we acquire enough data um, to acquire uh, good, robust measurement, but not more data than required that would contribute to uh, both acquisition time, processing time, and later on data storage time. So we want to keep things uh, quite efficient. And important to note is this analysis and calculation is done automatically by the software. So uh, as in the opening, the user doesn't have to be a an expert on how to explicitly define and set um, all of these parameters. The software will do it for the user. Uh, another interesting scenario that will demonstrate um, the software capabilities. So this goes back to my narration during the path planning of how we perform the validation checks. <clears throat> so in this particular case, we are inspecting this hole inside of this mounting bracketry. So again, the I, uh, nominal the nominal position of the sensor in this case would have been with the sensor uh, aimed normal to that surface with a couple of obvious issues if that were to be the case in that one, the sensor would not be able to see through the bracket on the opposite side as well as it would be in a collision condition with the part itself. So the software in the matter of a few seconds uh, during the iterated uh, through those validations and produced the solution that you see on the screen here that will be a an acceptable solution to make that measurement so I will this is also a good example um, we do have capability so our goal is to automate as much of this process for the user as entirely possible however there are situations where <clears throat> maybe advanced situations or uh, more complex scenarios and where we may have an expert user that uh, desires to dive a little deeper. So we have built in that level of functionality as well and this is a, a good example to uh, demonstrate on. So we have a modify path capability and this is where the user can uh, come deeper into the software and perform their own modification if needed. However, uh, we still provide a, a large amount of guidance and input to the user as they're making those changes. So for instance, in this case, if I were to rotate the robot uh, slightly more off axis, we see the constellation in the sensor turn orange. And then off to the right in our information pane, it's clearly indicated that the aiming guideline recommendations for the sensor were exceeded. So that feedback is uh, provided to the user very visually. As well, if I were to rotate the other way, it becomes a collision condition with the part, which is also clearly indicated. And similar indications if the AccuSight line of sight was exceeded or the sensor line of sight was uh, exceeded. So we have that uh, type of feedback to the user um, should there be any manual intervention needed. <clears throat> As well, the path itself, the order of the path can be modified. And oftentimes in doing that, it will be required to add or change some of the via poses that are used for collision and path flow purposes. So those capabilities are also provided to the user. However, uh, with manual modification comes some risk. So in that case, it's maybe a little difficult to see here, but there is a check path functionality. And if the software detected the user did make any changes, that functionality would be invoked to check the user changes, which would essentially perform the validations that were performed during the automatic path generation for the line of sight and collision condition 
uh, type issues. So we provide a lot of the tools and guidance to the user should the manual interventions be required. Okay. So at this stage, uh, we have a completed, we have completed the addition of the part and developed the routine for our new part. So our offline activities would be uh, complete at this stage and we would want to package up what we've done um, into a file that we can transfer to the online gauge. So at our part level, we would save, save off um, our PNC file, a package file that uh, we've developed for Perceptron uh, software. <clears throat> And that will package up uh, everything we have here, all of our CAD objects, all of our feature definitions, and obviously the path planning routine. At this stage, I would take that package to the production machine uh, when it was available, and we would do the reverse process, which would be load. So imagine uh, we're now looking, now we're working on our production machine and we would load in that work that we did offline to our production uh, version of the APG software. And I should note on the production machine, the APG software is connected directly to the live robot. So at that time when we imported our configuration onto the live version, we would then export that routine to our live robot and we would then have our inspection routine on the robot. Now I mentioned earlier in the webinar when we positioned the part CAD onto the fixture that the precise location was not uh, overly critical and so now I will describe why that is the case. So the, the first time we uh, put a real part into the measurement station and we've sent our program to the robot, we will run through what we call the truing process for the part and this is a, it's a one-time process in which we will run the robot through the inspection routine. It will do a uh, virtual or soft alignment to the locating features on the part and then we will take the transform generated from that alignment and we will uh, it's grayed out here because we haven't actually run the live robot obviously but we will apply that um, transform which represents the actual position of our part in the measurement station versus the uh, digital twin representation of the part in the measurement station and we will apply that transform to the robot program that was generated offline and then we will automatically modify that robot path to account for the real position of the part in the in the real world and then that will give us the most accurate uh, robot path and measurement um, path results to minimize any uh, tweaking or tuning that would be required on the live cell. So again, to shorten as much as possible the launch time and the time to introduce a new part to the inspection station um, and that's the process we use to do that. So at this stage we have uh, programmed offline and deployed our part to the measurement station. Okay, now that we have completed our APG software demonstration, we'll do a, a final recap here of what we saw during the webinar today. Again, the theme of this webinar was to demonstrate how we can maximize our productivity using the Perceptron Automated Path Generation or APG software. The primary objectives as you see in the screen are we want to make as efficient as possible the process of adding in new parts to be measured on our automated inspection station. And in doing that, we also want to enable our end users to be able to add and maintain those parts on their own. Uh, and therefore, we targeted, as you saw in the workflow and the usability of the software, to have a very streamlined uh, software package 
which is targeted specifically to the metrology use case and even more specifically to the uh, technology that is provided by Perceptron to actually perform the accurate measurements. So again, on the on the right here, we see what some of those features are of what APG automates. Uh, the the grouping of those features of which features can be inspected from a common robot position. Obviously, generating the robot path and optimizing it, making sure it's collision free. So additionally, um, targeted at the Perceptron technology. We want to make sure that we have that line of sight to the AccuSite, that line of sight from the Helix to the feature, make sure that we're adhering to the guidelines of the Helix aiming um, criteria and providing that feedback to the user, considering the volume of the sensor, automatically calculating algorithm parameters, scan volume and position, line densities, uh, et cetera. So as I reviewed during the, the demo, we want to you know, take as many of these uh, intricate decisions and calculations by the user and uh, automate that um, so our novice users can be able to, to program their, their new parts. So that's the summary of what we showed during the webinar today and what we wanted to leave uh, the impression of the power of the software. So now we can move on to some questions. Of the questions that came in during the webinar, there were several uh, duplicate questions. Therefore, I will try to address those first. Any any questions that uh, we don't have time to get to during the, the constraints of the webinar, we'll be sure to have a Perceptron representative follow up with you personally to answer those questions and any additional you may have. The first question, what if I want to add or remove features to an existing routine? So yes, we didn't dive that uh, deep uh, during the demonstration. The way the software would handle that is if uh, features are unassigned from the routine layer or new features are added and assigned to the routine layer, then the software automatically detects that the generated path is no longer valid and clicking the generate path button will trigger the same mechanisms that are used during the initial path planning. The one difference in this case is uh, the existing path can be maintained as much as possible if desired and then the new features that were added can be inserted to the existing path and if features were removed, they can be removed and then any required uh, via positions for collision avoidance would be automatically included as well. And then for any of those added features, um, of course, all the line of sight and aiming guideline checks are, are performed as well. So um, that's how that would be handled. Uh, fairly straightforward, just didn't have time to, to review. Uh, next question, how large of a part can be inspected? Um, the short answer is uh, there's quite a lot of uh, opportunity there. In the, in the software demonstration, we viewed there was uh, one AccuSight tracker. And within that tracker volume and in combination with the turntable, uh, we can handle approximately a 1.5 meter cube of part area, let's say. And that happens to be with the single robot and the single AccuSight tracker. However, the system, the technology in the system is scalable. Therefore, if we did have uh, larger parts or larger assemblies, the AccuSight ecosystem can be scaled to use multiple trackers and also as or if needed, it, the station itself can have multiple robots with a uh, constellation mounted, constellation and sensor mounted to each robot. So in that manner, we can, we can scale the cell from one to uh, up to four robots is common if we you know, get as large as a uh, car or a truck body. So that's how we would handle the situation for measuring uh, larger parts. For, for most nearline type systems, the single tracker, single robot is um, quite an adequate solution in, in that scenario. 
Uh, this next uh, question. Is AccuSight required to use the APG software? Uh, for our demo today, we did have the AccuSight system, but in the case of maybe it was an inspection system that was more process oriented and the AccuSight was not required, then yes, the APG software can easily handle that, that condition. Uh, really as simple as we uh, do not populate our digital twin with an AccuSight system and therefore during the automated path planning, we don't perform any line of sight checks to, a, to an AccuSight tracker. All the other checks are of course completed for the sensor itself and the path optimization and collision conditions, just no uh, check for the AccuSight uh, line of sight. Uh, related question, is a turntable required? Again, uh, no, no turntable is required. I would say that as well is more common in the nearline uh, scenarios where maybe the variety of parts that is to get, be inspected is quite a bit um, more wide ranging. Uh, therefore, that, that rotary table does give us some flexibility um, as needed. However, for many inline type stations um, or maybe even smaller parts, the turntable is not a, not a requirement. The, the um, APG software can easily do the path planning um, with the stationary, stationary tooling. Uh, next question, which robot models are supported? As you saw in the demonstration, we had a FANUC robot uh, in that scenario. However, we, we have developed models for, for KUKA robots and Kawasaki. And the way we handle the robots is um, generally we'll work with our, our customer. And if there's a specific requirement um, or a need for a particular standard or station, we can develop the robot model as as required for those instances and then uh, put them into the software. One note on the, the robots, we do as much as possible, try to go with the models that have the through arm, uh, through arm cabling type configuration. Even though our, our sensors and AccuSight use relatively little and small, uh, little in number and small in diameter, types of cabling, it, it is more efficient uh, from an automated path planning perspective if we can use the models with the through arm cabling. Um, we have taken some steps to be able to use the external dress packs and account for that um, automatically and visually in the software as well. Um, so that can be done. And I think we have time for one more question. This one, does the part holding fixture need to be precise? So maybe two, two uh, approaches with the part holding fixture. As I noted during the software demonstration, <clears throat> it wasn't critical that we precisely place the part on the fixture as we accounted for that in the truing process. Um, and really the most important part for the part fixture is that it holds the part stable during inspection. And then as long as that is true, we will virtually align off datum features on the part, uh, on the part itself and use whatever datum structure was designed for the part when we do the inspection. Uh, the second approach, if it is such a part that maybe is not very rigid or it is desired to have a geometric fixture that actually constrains the part at the time of inspection, then that type of fixture can be used. Um, and in that case, there would be reference markers around the fixture um, that are valued in the coordinate system of the part space and then we would do the virtual alignment off of the fixture itself. The fixture itself would not have to be precisely located um, because we would align to those datum, uh, say tooling ball type features on the on the fixture. So we're nearing the end of our time. Uh, that I think that's all the time we have for the questions. But as I mentioned, um, a representative will follow up, and as well the recording of the webinar 
will be made available um, for you as well. So finally, I would like to thank you for your time and attention and wish you a great day.